Welcome to another episode of me talking about what I've sold on eBay and Facebook Marketplace, talking about how I acquired it and getting an idea on how profitable this is. First of all, I just wanted to touch on, I decided I don't like the name of my channel. The reason I don't like the name of my channel is because I started to write handwritten notes to people who are buying my items on eBay and asking for positive reviews on eBay. The name, the name is weird. Um, other people have done it. So I'm not satisfied with it. So we're going to go back and think about it. But I don't want the name to hold me up from continuing to make videos. So welcome to the channel that I have yet to name. What are we doing? We're talking about what I sold. So going back to the last time I've been with you guys, we've had some items sell. As always, I'll throw it out on a picture if I don't have it with me. I actually only have two items with me. Um, so we'll talk about that. First thing we're talking about, we're going to go through the eBay sales and then we'll talk about Facebook Marketplace sales. So eBay sales, I sold video game from the original Nintendo Entertainment System. It's called Clax. Boom, put a picture right there. Clax, I've never played this game. I've, basically, this was another find from the big storage unit I bought and I'm still going through ever so slowly. Found it in there, actually with a lot of other Nintendo Entertainment System games that I've had all listed now. They're really easy to list because you basically just look up the game, you see what other people have sold it for, sell one like this, everything's already pre-filled, boom. It's one of the quickest listings on eBay you can do. Priced it pretty fairly in my opinion and you know it was gone I believe within the day of being listed. So Clax is gone, not the door, I wrote a personalized letter. Um, also linked to my video game channel because it was a video game purchase so I was trying to, um, in my note to the buyer, trying to really branch out there and get some more followers. Stay tuned. Uh, next item I sold, I sold the Hallmark Keepsake Magic Core Christmas Ornament. So this was in the box. Um, it looked to be in good condition and it had the box with its little packaging so usually things like that are nice to you know try to find that exact item on eBay and see what it's going for you know it was going for a little bit I, I sold this actually for 1650 plus four dollars and ninety cents in shipping well I priced it a little bit less than what the sold comps were suggesting because I don't have a means to test this this was a, like a light up ornament I don't have a way to test that uh, I guess I could test things I, I'm just very strapped for time so I'm thinking in my efficiency of listing I'm just not gonna test certain things and just list untested if it's priced well enough price it more competitively as an untested condition and people can choose to take the gamble on it I mean if it doesn't work then I'm, I'll take the loss it didn't work I sold you a product didn't work I'm fine with taking the refund on that and you know eat the little bit of shipping cost um, in the efficiency of time that I'm saving it's that's just my personal choice um uh, we'll wait and see until that bites me in the butt uh, next I sold this uh, vintage red wax wax blah, 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 not wax Red Maxwell House coffee mug. Um, so I found this at an estate sale that was, it was probably one of the coolest estate sales I've ever been to. It was like a really old barn of like a veterinarian and you know, like an old veterinarian because all her stuff was like old, old. I'm still going through some of the stuff there. Old, old place. Cool stuff. I got this for pennies. It was basically given me for free. I got it in a lot of, a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff that I didn't pay more than $12 for. You know, I got a lot of stuff. So when I listed this, I had saw, you know, maybe a couple of comps. Um, I made sure to throw the word vintage on there. Um, I, I've recently, since listing this, have come to realize that vintage has an actual measure date to it. So if an item is vintage, apparently it can only be called vintage for uh, I just Googled it. Um, according to most of the experts in the trade, the term vintage refers to an item that is at least 50 years old, but less than 100. I wonder what it's called after 100. I don't know. Um, we'll find out soon. Maybe like classic. I don't know. Th these terms have loose recognizable meanings. These aren't really, they're not really enforced on eBay though. A lot of people can put vintage in front of whatever. People can put rare in front of, rare is probably one of those generic terms, but it, it almost, in my opinion, it stimulates something in the buyer will make them want the item more because they have this idea now that it's rare. And I'm not saying be shady. I'm suggesting to use poppy words, descriptors, for listing your items. Don't just say, this is what I have. You gotta really sell it because you're selling these things. So anyway, off of my high horse on that. So vintage mug, easy shipping. Um, put a little post-it note in there. What I will say about the post-it notes though, I, I wrote five post-it notes requesting positive feedback. Three of them have already said yes. Three of them said yes. And I think my my percent of automatic positive feedback was probably around like 10. I'll probably say 10 to 20%. So to go from 10 to 20% to like 
of your sales turning into positive feedback because you're asking for it. You know, if you're looking for positive feedback when you're just getting started, that's an option. Do that. Um, next thing I sold, another Nintendo NES game, Mad Max. Boom. Have not seen that movie, but I heard it's like a culty classic. I should see it eventually. It's like uh, race cars and the desert and like death race-ish. I don't know. Um, but anyway, this video game sold. I believe I did a little bit of a back and forth. You know, they made an offer on for six. Oh, I think they made an offer for five. I had listed for six, and I accepted for six. Blah, 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 blah. Offer for five, listed for eight. Countered with six, accepted. Sold. Easy. I also found out that I cannot ship video games media mail, so that's a bummer. So I paid four ninety for shipping. Well, he paid four ninety for shipping. I think I probably paid three eighty, um, because they usually give you like a roughly a dollar discount. Um, sold two days ago. Next item is a purse, and it's funny how my mom, who inspired me to do this, she saw the purse and she was like, "Purse? You got a purse? I don't know if that'll sell well." Well, mom, I must have picked it up because I looked, and it looked like. People wanted similar things on eBay, but I sold this Samantha Brown overnight weekender briefcase. Well, I'm just reading my listing title, but basically, you know, all I really had with this, and I still have this here, actually. I don't even know. You need to put pictures. This bag. And I got this at a garage sale in the summer, and they were like, it looked like it was a movie sale. They were selling a lot of clothes and bags, and, you know, they were not asking for a lot. I think I paid maybe a dollar for this. Um, I sold it for 20 plus. You know, they paid eleven seventy five for shipping. I, I think I was able to get a discount shipping for eight. So I get a little bit of money in that regard. Why did I pick this up? I saw the name, um, Samantha Brown. So it's like, okay, that's a brand I don't know anything about, but you know, I can easily type that into eBay and just check the comparisons. Um, it seems to be in good condition. You know, the insides, they are very, you know, I, I kind of like that orangey inside. It's very counterintuitive to the turquoisey outside. So listed it. I saw there were some comps for some like sets. They, these sold well in sets apparently. Like I, if you saw two two different types of item, like a purse and then like a bigger bag of the same outer patterning and color, those sold. Um, so I had a, I priced this a little less than what the sold comps were suggesting uh, because it was only one item. I listed it about a little over a week ago, so it didn't take that long to move. I'm pretty happy with that. Basically, my title, I just put a lot of like keywords. I really want to I really always want to make sure I'm fulfilling. I'm doing all that I can to really spread out that title. Use all 80 words. Get as many descriptions in there as you can. So, and, or anything that you think someone will call this. So I said Samantha Brown overnight. I think I saw someone else say overnight weekender when I when I picked a sold one like this. It was because someone else had a similar title. So Samantha Brown overnight weekender briefcase bag embossed turquoise embossed turquoise crocodile. Yeah, and the other thing, you don't need good grammar. You just need the words, the key words. A title of key words will sell. You know, I don't need to put of turquoise or of crocodile. Like, just put crocodile. I, I think I was right at 80. I'm mentioning this because I was right at 80 with this title. It's because I took out all the excess words and I put in my keywords. Uh, the next thing that sold. So, inspiration YouTuber Harry Tornado. He is in proximity to a unique sort of Goodwill store. It's called Goodwill Bins. Basically, they're bigger outlets of Goodwill like leftovers. So they sell things for really, really cheap. I got um, this next item, um, as well as a bunch of other items um, that I listed. A lot of them are still on my desk, actually. I got this cool lightsaber I'm going to keep for myself. I For all this stuff, I didn't pay more than $3.36. So, But basically, I saw this, and you know, this is really, you know, this is my like favorite kind of item. So what is this? This is just something that has a model number on it. So, you know, as soon as I see model numbers, name brands, or just brand names in general, I'm gonna look it up. So Johnson Century Model 100B, apparently it's vintage. Apparently people were paying, you know, 20 some bucks for it with a box in a little nicer condition. Mine was scratched up. So I threw mine up for, I think I threw mine up for 19. I threw mine up for 19, immediately was getting offers. I got an offer for 15. Uh, I just, you know, if I immediately get offers for listings, I tend to just ignore them because I'm sure there's something in the algorithm that when you first list an item, it gets it gets pushed extra hard for similar items. But then as it's been listed for longer and longer, it kind of falls by the wayside. But I will say that if you're, nonetheless, if your item is still getting quick traction after being listed, give it some time to really manifest itself and allow some eyes to get on here. And like, maybe you'll find that one person who's really wanting it and willing to pay your initial asking price. I came down $1.50 for this. I, I, I uh, counter offered for $17.50 and the person took it. It's a really weird situation where I had very similar 
uh, offers from two different accounts, but they were both in Seattle. They both would have shipping to a Seattle address, and they're both like in China. So I don't, I have no idea what this operation is that's going on, but um, I sold them this vintage. I better not play with it before I break it. Vintage fishing reel. Okay, so that was everything on eBay that I've sold, which is quite a bit. But now moving over to Facebook Marketplace. I sold a lot on Facebook Marketplace, and I'm happy that that's happened. So let's talk about what I sold on Facebook Marketplace since last time. So, and I guess when I say I sold a lot, I really only sold two things. So uh, what were the two things? I'll do the most exciting, or least exciting, the most exciting. So first thing I sold, out of the gigantic storage unit that I uh, bought, um, there was this like Rubbermaid janitor's mop bucket assembly so it was a little dirty on the inside but it looks like it had been used like once and they never cleaned it so it was pretty good condition all around i listed it on Facebook marketplace for 40 and I, I don't know if i researched it that much i think i saw what other people had it listed for and it was probably similar but i remember one gentleman on a facebook group that i listed this to for like local milwaukee had said you get this new for 40 dollars," and i was like oops so i didn't bother to change the price though because it was still getting a lot of interest um albeit you know offers the thing about facebook you get a lot of communication but not a lot of follow through so i had probably i'd probably say i had 10 people inquire about this and then just stop talking finally someone said they offered 30 cash and, and uh or maybe they offered they did 25 and i said you could have it for 30 because i'd had it on there for a couple of weeks and it's it's big and awkward and i don't want to take up any more space so i sold that um so that's great the last thing i sold was my bike i so i bought a 200 dollars fixie bike and I don't know if you know what a fixie bike is. A fixie bike is basically a bike that only has one gear, so it's equally as difficult to pedal no matter the condition. You know, the, the benefits of multi-gear bikes is that, you know, you can manage different terrains with a similar level of ease. Uh, that bike was just... And also you had to assemble it. And you, it's, they recommended you take it to somewhere to get it professionally assembled. But, you know, me being as cheap as I am, I didn't do that. I tried to do it on my own. I don't have the right tools to do everything. So I really just never rode that bike. Spent $200 on it and never used it. Um, it was a nice piece of like apartment ornamentary, but, uh, I finally saw, I was looking at it and I'm just looking at my apartment thinking about how can I thin out the herd here? Saw the bike, listed it for a hundred dollars, had a lot of interest. It was probably on there for less than two weeks. Uh, finally someone was like, I'm coming for, I'm coming to get it for a hundred bucks. Boom. Out of my hands. So sold the bike, but that's all. So, uh, thanks for watching. Hope you learned something. I like talking about the things I sold and, you know, giving ideas out there. I uh, appreciate all the looks at this video. You, if you're here this long, me muttering and stuttering through this video, um, think, consider liking, consider liking, appreciate the likes. I, I heard likes help YouTube videos. And uh, subscribe if you want more. Uh, I'm going to be doing this on a frequent basis. I'm also going to be doing other kinds of videos. I need to upload to this channel more often, so be aware of that. So thank you, though. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.